Oh, hey, g'day guys. Welcome back to another Grab a Quick Fix with the Dad Tricks. Now today we'll be replacing the rotors and brake pads of a 2018 Toyota Corolla. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, now the first thing you're gonna to need to do is jack your car up and take the front wheel off. So let's get into it. All right, now that the tire is off, you've got access to the disc and the brake pads. Now I've taken the tire and I've popped it under the car just for a bit of added safety, just in case the jack fouls, because you never know and you don't want to get anything squished. Anyway, let's get into it. All right, now as well as having the tire under the car for safety, it's also a good idea to chop the wheels up. So just in case the car does move, well, it's not going to go anywhere with the chocks. All right, now that we have access to the caliper and the rotor, there are two 14 mil bolts that we need to undo. One, two. Okay, now remove the bolts and put them in a safe place where they're not gonna get dirty. Now, once the bolts are removed, you can rotate this caliper off, but you need to be very careful with regards to this brake line here, as you don't wanna twist it, bend it, kink it, or get it damaged in any way. Uh, so you'll need to get this caliper and rest it up on here and make sure that it doesn't pinch or damage the brake line. So let's get into it. All right, now I ended up securing the caliper with a heavy duty cable tie up the top here because I found that resting it on here, it was just a bit unstable and a bit unsteady and I didn't want it to fall and accidentally damage the brake hose here. So the next thing you'll need to do is there are a couple of 17 mil bolts here, one and another one down here, which you will need to undo. So um, if they're a little bit stiff, you can always use a bit of WD-40 to loosen it up a bit. All right guys, now if these bolts are still a little bit tight, after using a bit of WD-40 to help try and loosen it, well, you might need to give it a bit of assistance and give it a little whack. All right. There you go. Now I've used the rag so I can protect my spanner there there we go look at that nice and loose now time to get it off that's what she said all right now after removing the bottom 17 mil bolt it's time to remove the top one now be very careful when doing this as you don't want this bracket to fall and get damaged on the floor so let's remove it and it should easily just pop off like that now place the bracket on a rag or a towel so that it doesn't get damaged and now let's get onto the rotor. Now removing the rotor should be easy as one, two, three. Well, you don't even need two and three. Hopefully it just comes off with the one. Now we've gone with Bosch because it was decent quality, decently priced, and it was readily available at super cheap auto. So when you get your rotor, it will come packaged in a plastic bag. Now what you'll need to do, obviously, is remove it from the bag, and then you will need to Spray it with degreaser or some alcohol to get the anti-rust coating off there because the uh, first couple of times you use your brakes, there's gonna be a god awful smell uh, coming from there. So you wanna remove all of that coating. All right, now we've also gone with Bosch brake pads because well, they're reasonably priced, good quality and readily available at super cheap also. All right, let's get to it. All right, there you go. So there's your brake pads. Now, to remove the old brake pads from here, well, it's quite easy. All you need to do is really push through and release. It comes up. And you'll also need to take this clip off here, there, and pop it on the brake pad there. So there'll be one clip on each of the brake pads for each side. So let's get clipping. As you can see, here's the clip. That should easily pop off, but if not, there's a bit of a clip on the clip to come off. I don't know if you can see it on the camera here, but there's a little notch in there where the clip goes on. So let's pop it on the new one. There we go, clip done. All right, now if you're having trouble trying to get this clip off, all you need to do is grab a small flathead screwdriver, pop it in the middle, push it in gently, 
and it should just easily pop off like that. As you can see, there's a little notch there where the clip slides into. As you can see, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but that slides into that notch there. You'll be able to hear it, ready? Click, and then that locks into place for the new one. So get your small head, flat head screwdriver, take it off, get your new one, and then just pop it in just like that. Now, while we've got everything out, we might as well check the caliper slides here. So what you need to do is gently pull it out. You wanna check it. You wanna make sure that you do not damage these rubber boots because that will be a pain to replace. So let's slowly remove it. Check the bolts. Actually, they look pretty darn good all right so we'll re-grease them and put them back we'll check the other side as well to make sure it's okie dokie all right let's take a closer look so just pop it in gently and then that should just pop over just like that there you go now it's time to put the brake pads back on now to replace the brake pad all you need to do is pop it in on an angle twist it and it should just slide in just like that. There you go. And then you repeat it for the other side. All right, so what we need to do first is pop the clean rotor on. Now, I know that some models do have some sort of plastic clip that holds this in place. This particular model doesn't, so just carefully place it on there, making sure that it's not gonna fall off then you'll need to get your brake pads and you'll need to pop this on with your 17 mil bolts so let's get to it carefully place it over the top there get your 17 mil bolt and look to where you're going to find the hole All right, time to put the caliper on. Now, if you want to reuse your cable tie, well, all you need to do is grab that flathead screwdriver and lift up the clip like that. And just be very careful you don't drop the caliper. There you go. All right, time to put the caliper back on. Now, if you can't get it on because this piston is out, You'll need to get a C-clamp to compress it in because it is super duper tough. You won't be able to do it by hand. So it's not gonna fit because it's with the old brake pads which are quite worn. So we'll have to compress this piston. Okay, now I've used the new one quick grip clamp because it has rubberized ends as to not damage the piston or any of the components. So I've squeezed it. It's made the piston flush. Now it's time to pop it on. As you can see, fits very well. Just need to push this piston in there. And then grab your 14 mil bolt and secure the top bit like that. So then there's no chance of it falling and getting damaged. Now, time to put the bottom one on. All right, now once the 14 mil bolts are secure and the caliper's on, it's time to put the wheel back on. Well, there you have it guys, easy peasy, bosom squeezy. Now, all you need to do is the other side and you're raring to go. Now, if you like this video and you think it's a bit of all right, well, and you wanna help the algorithm and also help us, well, don't forget to hit that like button, which you're gonna find, oh, I think it's over here. Yeah, that feels good. Now, if you want to get notified of any upcoming tips, tricks, hacks, and mods of anything caravan and camping related, Forbia related, and also anything car related for now, because, well, we're going to get rid of this when we go on our lap around Australia. Well, don't forget to hit that notifications button, which you're going to find. Oh, I think it's over here. Yeah, that's it. Ooh. 
Now, if you want to get us wetter than a cowboy at a rodeo, well, don't forget to hit that uh, subscribe button, which you're gonna find here. Oh, yeah, that does feel good. Now, for realsies, guys, all this is under the video, and also check out the description for any links for anything that you want to get some discounts on. Anyway, um, well, thanks for tuning in to another Grab a Quick Fix with the Dad Tricks. Well, I'll leave it here and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace out. Alrighty guys, now a super duper important hot tip. Now, if you guys don't have any car stands, which probably a lot of you don't, I mean, I don't, well, you can always use your car tire to pop under your car just in case the jack fails. Because if the jack fails, well, it's only gonna land on the tire, which is no biggie, unless you got your hand under the tire. Anyway, let's get to it.